We have a healthcare crisis. Our healthcare system is clearly broken. This is insane, folks. We're spending a lot of money. What are we getting in return? Healthcare is not a privilege for the fortunate few, but a basic, fundamental human right. Why don't we give people the choice? What can be more American than that? I, I, I used to, do you think we're going to get health care here, Michael? I mean, oh, Fine, you know. Uh, no, I'm not that happy with my health care right now. I do know that what it is not to have health care. I've lost my family, my, I have a dead daughter. Just continuous problems of uh, debt. It for sure was a factor in losing my three children or losing the family. I see a lot of people die every day, you know. This is part of the hard thing of being somebody that, that's been on the streets and knows, they call me the mayor of the streets, I know a lot of people. So like, you know, people my age in the 50s are dying in front of me and that's a lot of the vets that came back from the Vietnam War, in fact, a lot of them on the streets. I see people sleeping in their wheelchairs on the streets every day. And you do too, and you walk past people every day that are disabled, sleeping on the sidewalks. You know, people go, you know, well, why is Europe, why do they have health care? And here, we don't have any health care. Hey, if it's better for the other people in society, it's better for me. I'd rather walk down the street where I don't see people on the sidewalks. Right now, the Berkeley Free Clinic's in serious trouble, so this is part of my thing, a get out. It's like the free clinic needs to get out there and let that, the community know that something gets stood for universal health care for free, for free care. It's in danger right now. If you come on Wednesday, you would have to come back on Friday. Are you homeless at the moment? As a health care provider, I, I hate, my, my least favorite part of the day is walking through uh, on Monday nights when we have a lottery day and watching 20 people sitting in a room knowing that only two of them will actually be seen by us just because of resources and because of time and all that kind of stuff. I don't think we have a healthcare system. We really have an illness treatment industry. We're now spending 16% of our whole economy on healthcare and we're not covering 45 million people who are here among us. We're not talking just about coverage. We're talking about coverage that's affordable, but care that's comprehensive, that doesn't leave anybody out. We have private for-profit companies that make profits by trying to sell themselves to healthy people and avoiding sick people. The special interests, the money, moneyed interests, still have the control. Hundreds gathering in Portland's Lincoln Park tonight expressing their displeasure with Anthem's recent rate increase. A standard employer-based health insurance policy today costs around $13,000. Power and money have become so consolidated that it's scary and challenging as to how we're going to do this. If we got a couple of thousand here, there could be a couple of thousand across the country in every little fucking town across the country. But, you know, it's, like I say, we're really divided up. The civil rights issues were won because hundreds if not thousands of people were in the streets all the time working to make it happen. But until we do that now, have that mass movement, we are not going to get out adequate health care. Without organization, all you're doing is reinventing the square. I can't think of anything that we've won around here that it wasn't done through the numbers, having the numbers on our side, thousands of people. And that's what we have to work towards. That's, anybody else want to speak? The mission of our group is to empower students at UC Berkeley um, to get involved politically in the healthcare reform debate in Washington, D.C. Um, and we want to provide them an outlet to participate in advocacy events on campus. Welcome to What's the Prescription for Healthcare Reform? We had a, a public forum on healthcare reform and we managed to fill a 400 seat auditorium. We staged a die-in protest or demonstration um, and 
Yeah, that involved, I think, about 60 students volunteering to lay down on the floor um, to symbolize the 45,000 people who die every year from lack of health insurance. And we managed to get, I think, over 400 signatures in 12 minutes, which is pretty incredible. This is an issue that whose time has come. So I think you'll find that there are many more who are in agreement than ever before. We want to see that health care providers, not the insurance industry, is in charge of our health care system. We are taking on an enormous giant in facing special interest. Yet we take it on willingly for the sake of human interest. So human pain, suffering, and illness will no longer be manipulated for profit. To be an effective leader, you have to be willing not to be in the forefront. We're all in this together. The purpose is to solve a problem or to accomplish a main goal and to constantly remind ourselves that that's what we're here for. Each of us has to earn our right to complain. The highest form of leadership really is following the people. I think the success is not having a leader. The soul of a leader is someone who can help a community recognize and solve its most intractable problems, can mobilize action. Tonight, our purpose is to stimulate discussion as well as political involvement among Berkeley students. I've been kind of taking the advantage of like just talking to people. People do not get enough information of what's really going on. There's something I can do. I've got resources here. I have a little bit of time to spare. The cumulative impact of coalition building and community organizing. I can find other people, like-minded people, who, who build this with me. Even a few people that are charged up can make a difference. I just have to believe that there are more, more, more of us will do it. There are nearly a thousand people here ready to fight. Rather than we taking the leadership, we actually want you to take leadership. It's critical to keep educating and keep pointing out what is something that would really be effective and really help a lot of people. A leader, most profoundly, is an educator. We must always be thinking how we can educate, advocate, and grow. Constantly question your teachers, constantly challenge them, as well as your peers. Find something that you really believe in and find a way to get involved. If you want to really do something, do it. I mean, people's part, one signature, this them alone, can go sign up for, and do a concert on a Saturday or Sunday every weekend of the year. We really, really want to leave you with a message of get involved. Please contact your congressional representative, your two senators, and let them know how you feel. Take this information you learned tonight and take, continue the debate. Talk to your friends about it. Keep, stay informed um, and really get involved. Go to your congressperson, write a letter to the editor, write an op-ed piece, have a block party, invite people into your home. Just by signing up, you can do a rally, you get a band, get some speakers, and start. There's something that each of us can do, no matter how little time or money we have. By organizing talks on campuses and bringing other people in to either have debates or discussions on the issue. This is just the beginning. What will each one of you do to push this movement forward? Whatever you can do, go ahead and do it. Evaluate whether your excuses are really relevant. It's your responsibility. What are you doing? <laughs>